How often do you find yourself stressing out about being stressed? Most people, myself included, treat stress like a dentist visit and only go when there's pain that's too much to bear. After going through cycles of high stress and imploding a couple of times honestly, I've come across a couple of easy to use stress management techniques that I think would be very good for almost anyone dealing with stress right now. But first, I want to give you something you can use right now in this moment because if you click this video, then you're probably already stressed out. <laughs> so take a moment and restore order to your environment. Clear those papers off of the desk move the pen and place it into the drawer you usually keep it in. What we're trying to do is expand your locus of control. Locus of control is a psychological term that refers to the degree to which an individual believes they have control over the events that influence their life. It can be internal, where we are the ones that's impacting the environment, or it can be external, where the environment is acting upon us. When we're stressed, we tend to default to an external locus of control and start seeing ourselves as the ones impacted by our environment rather than being able to make decisions. And something simple like tidying our workspace allows us to return to that position of power rather than being trapped as the person who the world is acting upon. So you can pause this video now and go do that really quickly. And when you get back, we'll get into more of the impactful tools and preventative measures we can use. Okay, disclaimer time. Now, as we get deeper into this video, please remember that I'm just some dude on the internet telling you what has worked for me. So this isn't meant to be a replacement for therapy or anything like that it does not help people that have extreme traumatic stress disorders like PTSD uh, there are professionals for that and I highly recommend you see a professional if you're dealing with something like that now with that out of the way the fastest way to really understand how to deal with stress is really understanding why we get into these stressful positions to begin with for myself High stress was a pattern until I successfully broke it last year. So I've spent a lot of time looking at how to resolve this cycle and it applies across most of the common stress inducing things people deal with. Relationships, finances, work, study, moving, etc. The pattern I found in myself revolved around two core causes internal circumstances and external circumstances. Internal circumstances are things like overvaluing something, making it a must have thing or trying to control something I couldn't. External circumstances also revolved around me trying to control something I couldn't, but also improper prioritization of things I could control. The easiest of these to deal with will definitely be the external circumstances, so let's take a moment and examine improper prioritization. Prioritizing things is a skill. That's why we have techniques like ABCDE, ICE, Moscow Method, and the list goes on. But many people have never taken time to learn the skill of prioritizing high leverage activities and often find themselves as assistants to the task of their life rather than a director creating a beautiful film out of their life. Which of course is super stressful. Here's the method I used when I was juggling full-time work, YouTube, freelancing, studying and living in a country where all of the bills look like this. So I'm giving you the goods. <laughs> it's a variation of the Eisenhower matrix. First, you want to list out all of the things that you have to do. Doing it on paper helps me more, I find, because it allows me to release the emotional backlogs through writing, but on a computer could work as well. Just clearly getting everything that you have to do out of your head and in front of you where you can see them all together. Then begin ordering them based from the task whose outcome would relieve the most stress to the least. What we're trying to do next is boil our most stressful task down to the most important actions required to accomplish it. So for example, if you're studying for an exam, the most important actions would be reading or revising or practicing. If you're operating a side hustle, the most important actions would be either delivering on a customer product or getting a new customer. Everything else then becomes secondary to these primary actions because they don't impact the outcomes with the same amount of momentum to help us release the stress. If it were a chess match, we're trying to box in the king rather than take a pawn. I don't play chess, so I don't know if that analogy made any sense. But anyway, now it's time to open a calendar application. I use Google Calendar. 
and you want to use as wide of a time period as you have available to you before your deadlines, then fill out those calendar slots completely with the actions and tasks. Now, here is where the biggest progress is going to take place. You're going to go through this calendar filled with already prioritized tasks and ask yourself what actually is important and moving the ball forward and delete the rest or move them to an application to get back to at a later date. This very simple prioritization technique helps a lot because it allows you to be preventative for the future so you can clear things that aren't actually making massive progress out of your way as well as leave space for things that will de-stress you like hanging out with friends if you have those types of things. The third habit is also external. It's like taking a drug that immediately opens your perspective to show you what is stressful and what isn't as well as simultaneously calming you down. It's doing exercise at an intensity that forces you to give it your focus. Forcing your focus is the important bit here, more so than whatever activity you decide to do. Because when we're stressed, our world encloses bit by bit. We become even more unaware of the millions and millions of things that are happening around us. Like the electricity working and the buildings next door that aren't on fire and your body is processing oxygen in at least a functional manner that all have nothing to do with your control but give you the privilege of being stressed out about your exam or your client project. Difficult exercise releases the feel-good endorphins that allow us to relieve anxiety and broaden our focus a bit. And while I don't have exact heart rate BPMs for you as that varies person to person, I'd define difficult exercise as anything that while you're executing is too challenging for you to have a conversation at the same time. Because in my experience, light exercise and stress, they don't go well together. I just felt energized and stressed. Now let's turn our focus over to the common internal circumstances that lead us to feeling stressed out. In my experience, it's really two key players here. Number one is trying to control the result or outcome of something that I cannot control. And number two being overvaluing something. Both of these allow us to place a priority onto something that we actually don't have a control over and obsess about it a bit and eventually stress out over it. Now, the Buddhist answer would be simply detach, but I'm not a Buddhist, so I don't have that particular power. But what has worked for me is changing the outcome I'm pursuing. Let's define pursuing in this case to mean both the outcome I want and the outcome I do not want to happen. Changing that to something much broader for the result and a much larger time frame and into something that I can control. So for example, let's say that how uh, you're starting a new business and you want to make $100,000 in your first year. That is a very narrow outcome with a narrow time frame. I would change that into something like, I want to be exceptional at marketing within five years time, as that's something you can control. You can control the amount of effort you put into marketing, opposed to the amount of people that decide to buy your product and how much you decide to pay you. Or if you're stressed out about a bad text message you sent to someone, shifting the outcome from a very specific result you want from a person you cannot control to being much better in a relationship over the course of three years. The wider time period allows room for error, which makes us feel a bit better when there are negative outcomes along the journey because we're all continually works in progress. That said, I do still support SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, result-oriented, and time-constrained. I do support those goals, but being directionally correct over a longer period of time rather than having very specific short-term outcomes can lead to a much more enjoyable journey overall. Now, number five is a bit silly, but can make an incredible difference. Stress tends to narrow our focus, so we lose sight of how many options are really available to us and start to stare down a pinhole of options, when in reality, it has many different ways we can reach the same outcomes. I like to get silly with this practice myself as it relaxes my brain and allows me to explore even more potential opportunities. So let's say for example I'm studying for an exam and I think it's the most important exam and I'm super stressed out about it. I grab a pen and paper and I start looking for the silliest solutions I can find to the problem. I could quit school and join a mariachi band. I could pay someone to write the test for me. I could only answer questions that have the number 3 in it. 
And this exercise truly is silly, but it allows you to explore more options. And some may actually work for you, like having AI Morgan Freeman read your text. All cells have an outer plasma membrane that regulates And not just only listening what to it on repeat. If you want to show support for your boy, click the like button below. Let's help some other people in the process as well. But seriously though, most of these ideas, they aren't going to help you at all. But what this practice is helpful for doing is expanding your internal low cost of control so you can see that there are actually other ways for you to accomplish the same outcome you're stressing out about that are easier for you. And of course, some will actually be usable as well. And I'm interested to know which of these are you gonna try, which of these you think is gonna be most useful to you. Please leave it in the comments below. If you have any alternative things that you do when you want to relieve stress, please also leave those in the comments below as well. And if you want to resolve some issues around time management, I have a video here that I think you'd enjoy. So guys, once again, peace and love.